hard stuff. Okay. Okay. All I'm right. So this right. is in reference. Oh, let me do say got it. Um, so with connected women leaders, mm -hmm. you know, part of our brief with them is that we are exploring the idea of mentorship and leadership. That's the work that we're doing. So when we were in Bellagio, mm -hmm. we had women and emerging leaders coming together. And then we had originally planned to go back to Omega and mm -hmm. do something at Omega. And we're also doing something with um, Courtney Martin and Vanessa, the Fresh Speakers oh, Academy. Yeah. And yep. people got really excited about the Fresh Speakers Academy. So um we're working what that is out with them yeah and then we got very excited about the work with mary robinson around climate yes. and doing a climate campaign but for that we're gonna have to go out and get additional funding and so as i was looking at the strategy of everything that we set out to do i realized that we did not come back around to the idea of mentoring and leadership and we really want something to show for that at the end of this year, right? Like we went out and we were asking this question about um, one of the things that Rockefeller really likes about connecting women leaders is that it's a warm network. Yeah. And you know, you ask women to show up and they're always looking for ways to connect with each other. So I had this idea and this is what I wanted to talk to you about. Okay. I thought, what if during UNGA, we did a sort of mentorship leadership summit at Rockefeller Foundation. Mm -hmm. And what would that look like? Right. And to do it in partnership with you. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing of that, the thing is, is that out of our budget, we have about $35,000. So the question is, is what could we do for $35,000? And I was thinking about, you know, in the design of it, Mm -hmm. You know, do we, they, they love the whole thing that they did with 17 rooms. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like, we need like to think of the Rockefeller mindset and we need mm -hmm. to come up with an experience that's about women's leadership that taps sure. into everything they're doing. Do yep. we do some pre-work? What does it look like on that day? Mm -hmm. And I want to go back to Rockefeller not with a proposal because we're not asking them for money or you have to pay for it. Yep. But with what the structure of what it could be. Mm -hmm. And my first question is like for $35,000, I mean, I know you want to think about it, but like, what could we realistically do for $35,000? Yeah. And like, you may say for $35,000, I suggest you have it be X amount of people we rely on Rockefeller to provide us with AV. Like, where can we get like plus plus on that just in terms of the structure of it? But um, this might be a way we want to think about it in terms of the content. I mean, we do want to come out of this with a body of work that they can share across the organization around mentorship and leadership. Right. That's as far as I've gotten. <laughs> Okay, that's all right. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's the that's the sum total you have for the entire event, like the food, the beverage, the AV, the everything. Yeah, and I'm sure that we could go to them and to say, look, at, we're going to put on this event, but we need right. Like Some there's there's certain things that I'm sure they could come up with, you know. Yeah, exactly. Well, and how many people are you thinking when we're thinking of using their offices potentially? When we look at the overall number of women, um, connected women leaders, it's about 85. But when we look at the subset who will likely be an UNGA, yeah. it might be 35. And then we might be then beaming this out. You know, right. it's from UNGA. We might be beaming it out, inviting yeah. our other leaders. Like that's what we did at, um, at Omega is that we had, we did, you know, there we did like three days of programming and then we had different people come in. And even in Bellagio, we, I can send you what we did, but we had different women coming in. But this is really on, yeah, mentorship and leadership mm -hmm. and that one piece of it. We'll right. also probably do something around the women's climate campaign, 
but I want to have like a piece of it. I want, I just want to make sure that we're answering the idea of our scope. Right. Yeah. Well, and I'm thinking too, I mean, the UNGA, UNGA week is really busy in Rockefeller's offices. So I think that's, that's also what I'm trying to think of is where we would place this. And I think I'd have to check. I think there's only two or three spaces where they can fit this many people um, because they really just have board meeting space. Uh -huh. you know? So for 35 people. Now, if you get that space, then you do have, you know, the AVs built in. So that's just there. I mean, you'd probably have to have somebody service use. They'd, they'd be thinking about that. And then um, the food and beverage is there. And if you paid for it, it's going to be a lot cheaper than going, yeah, outside. Yeah. Um, and then I would say your other, there's not really a lot of other expenses as long as you've got the space and you're just in it. And, but I don't think there'd be a lot of breakout rooms necessarily just because there's such a high, um, a, a high capacity need during that week. So as long as you could get a reservation in their board meeting or in their board meeting room, or like I said, I think there's two or three others. The reason I don't know specifically is I know they're redoing their entire building right now. Yeah. So, cause we're consulting with them on how they're building a piece of it out, you know, for their building, but I know they're, they're doing a lot of other work. So, um, I think that would be the first thing I do know they have some sort of a relationship or partnership with the New York public library. Oh, okay. The library has spaces and okay. so depending on that deal. That's that, interesting. Okay. That might be a place where you could go. And if they're not using it, that I'm just thinking is more likely. You yeah. Know? Okay. Then, I mean, oh, they might've not booked out their whole space for Unga Week and this is a perfect thing to place in it. I mean, somebody has to take those programmatic slots. Yeah. Um, but I'm just saying there's a, there's a lot of compression over those mm -hmm. days. So mm -hmm. otherwise I would say whatever deal they have with the New York Public Library, maybe that's an opening. Okay. Um, okay. I mean, the New York Public Library isn't cheap, but again, if we're thinking 35 people and all your expenses are is AV and food. Yeah. That's very doable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, that's very doable for 35 people. So, yeah, I mean, we could do something and then do something across the street at the Andes or something like that. If we yeah, yeah, that's right. I forgot the Andes was right there. Yeah. Yeah. So we could probably do a day of food. And, I mean, that's not going to run you. Even with AV, I wouldn't think $1,000 a person. So then you'd have, yeah, you could do like, and then at the end of the day, happy hour, four or five o'clock, you walk over to the Andes and you have, you know, heavy hors d'oeuvres and, and wine. Now that's going to be expensive. But if you save money over here, you know, a hundred, hundred dollars a person over at Andas now only chips away a bit. Now, how much can you be involved in the program design? So the program design, I mean, that's the, that's the part I love to be involved. I in. know. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I would probably just do a consulting package of, okay. you know, I don't know, maybe a $5,000 consulting package and do okay. 20 hours or something like that. Um, okay. And that still leaves you like a 30 grand budget. Yeah. Because I, I don't think you need a lot of logistics other than just an invite, you know, for this space. And then you go to Andaz and that's a, a simple um, cocktail contract. You know? Yeah. I mean, one of the things that I liked when we were talking about this before is the mm -hmm. sort of the pre work that you did. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. again, that's what I like. <laughs> yeah. I was I like did. really thinking about how we are engaging with women on the subject. I mean, because mm -hmm. we've got these two pressing things that are going on. We've got the climate work, mm -hmm. which we have to figure out. And there's a lot of interest in our group and being involved in that. And at the same time, we want to answer this leadership, mentorship, skill building, mm -hmm. some of the things that we're doing mm -hmm. that, um, and taking the, the, you know, yeah, the learning of what, of, of, of how far we've come. And then again, mm -hmm. is there a replicable model that, that Bellagio and the innovation group can start taking to others about how to build in mentorship and leadership into mm -hmm. their convenings? Now that is really exciting to think about. Yeah, I love the idea of that because that's what, I mean, you and I both know that's what Rockefeller wants. Yeah. Is we create modules of learning that can then be input into different spaces. So I would love that. So, I mean, that's and how I would think about it. Just knowing the limited budget, you know, we could do a 20 hours 
five thousand dollars that takes just right. a portion and i think that's plenty uh -huh. i would think of time for us to work through event design um, thoughtful curation of that agenda how we're going to implement this so that they could have something replicable to take after okay because um, you're, you're just thinking of one day right just a half yes. day yeah yeah so yes um so it's not going to be too long to to be with them and we would want to have pre-work then so that yeah. when we get on site people are already normed to the place where we're ready to begin and we've got right. feedback and survey data um input from them and like one of the things is that you know in this mentorship leadership is that you know uh, rockefeller has this program called uncommon collaborations where people mm -hmm. who are not commonly coming together are coming together so we like have a couple of those how are they doing how can right. what what were the learnings that we had exactly. from that yeah. you know what are the learn mm -hmm. like if we did a lot of pre-interviews where we had the interviews and then you know, we're coming together for the sharing of best practices on mentorship and leadership, but we do the work in advance, then it's sort of like releasing and advancing this work, right? Um, the outcome of this work in September, which then gets presented back to mm -hmm. Rockefeller Foundation, you know? Yep. Yeah, I, I like this. And you're right, we do need to find out what's already been happening what have been learnings and in my mind it's also about what are the questions that we want to have asked in any type of mentorship relationship what are mm -hmm. what are the questions that are the most provocative they're the most interesting that are generating the most responses because it, it won't be about answers you know every answer is going to be different but the questions you could at least look at what are the questions that are useful what are the obstacles that are often you know most use cases um and what are the success stories and why 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 were they the success stories so, yeah mm -hmm. and we did do like you know we have one of our our members who like has 25 mentees that she's working with any given day you know wow and like but that's not what she does all day long but you know it's like so what is yeah the success and they don't all they all need different things on different days mm -hmm. so Right. You know, and again, what we're trying to get at is what is the role of mentorship that Nope. Oh, did your internet go out? Did my internet go out? Let's see. I don't hear you. Can you hear me? No. Oh shoot. <laughs> oh no. Can you Let's see. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? No. Oh no. Oh dear. <laughs> uh, let's see. We can call in again. Let's see. Do you want to come in on the same link? Oh my God. Sorry. Well, go. Yep. I hear you. You rack. Awesome. Okay. Good. It, I was like, like froze. I know. <laughs> like, oh no. no. It froze. And then my whole computer froze. And then it finally came back. Oh, good. Well, good. Well, I'm glad it came back. <laughs> That's good. Um, but anyway, but what you were saying, I think this, this one person you're talking about who has 25 mentees, that already is an interesting case study to see what's working and how are you able to take on 25? And my question would be twofold. One, would you be able to take on 50? What would that take? Two, it, what if you slim down to 10? You know, what are the, what do either of those scenarios look like? Right, like that's perfect. Yeah, I think, you know, what, what I was gonna say is that like, well, as we think about what Rockefeller is solving for, which is mm -hmm. what, what you're saying is, what happens if you plug somebody into a system and they and that could quickly accelerate their work? Yes, exactly. That's what they're trying to answer for. How do they get, you know, like everyone, how do we get to impact faster? That's, that's what exactly. is the role of mentorship in that? And how does that differ? What, what do we know about women? Mm -hmm. um, we know that women 
tend to like to network um, Mm -hmm. among each other. So, you know, what, what, what are we learning out of that? So, um, and so if that, if the output of this, and of course the day is the physical manifestation of it, but like you may say, look at when we think about the budget, let's do this body of work together and Mm -hmm. let's spend more on the pre-work and let's do, you know, a smaller life footprint that Mm -hmm. is sort of the showcase of what we've heard. Right. You know, Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Just so, thinking it through, I'm watching how your brain sense. works, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, because my question in, in kind of thinking in those two ways would be if she took on 10, would it be more impactful mm-hmm. or if she took on 50, would it be more impactful? Is it more impactful to do quantity and actually replicate the level that that is at um, and slim it down? Or is it more impactful to actually um, condense the work and make it deeper? And I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know the answer. That's why I'd want to ask that question. Yeah. So that we find that magic kind of Goldilocks um, mentor level. And maybe the Goldilocks mentors is a hundred because we know that's what, that provides the impact at scale that we want. Maybe the Goldilocks is 15. Or another question is, you know, we're seeing, you know, in the areas that we're talking about climate, mm-hmm. global mm-hmm. health, and food security. Yep. What is the role of the activist and what does the activist need as a mentor? Since the activist is really just sharing with us their lived experience and you want them to can continue to get energized, but really the work of change is going on in, the, in different parts of the ecosystem. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, if we were to create archetypes right. in a way, Right. Mm-hmm. Like what are the archetypes of different people? One of the stories that I loved is that we had Anushka, you know, Anushka. Yes. Was, yeah. Yeah. So we had Anushka and we did this thing at the end where we all got in a circle and we, mm-hmm. um, everyone looked at the person next to them and they said, you know, like Heather, you know, one of the things that I admire about you in this setting was that you did this and you're like amazing thing. And then they give a hug and then the person goes on. It was like a really emotional moment. So uh, Anushka was next to me. And so she was like, Rhonda, before I tell you what I think about it, I just want you to know I'm not a hugger. (laughs) I was just thinking to myself, like, there's like, there's different archetypes, but I yeah, do think it might are. be really interesting mm-hmm. to break it out into different archetypes. And like you said, there is the archetype, which is a mentor who's the great multiplier, mm-hmm. you know, great. who that's, they're the connector, let's say. Mm-hmm. Um, but right. so it's like, what are the different archetypes? And you, we just, you know, we know that if we come up with something like that, Rockefeller is just going to love that. Oh yeah. No, they would, they would absolutely love that. And the other thing I'm thinking about too, that we're working on with a client, which I think is really interesting is um, if what we want to know is what the activist needs, then um, you can let them program uh, the events or the, you know, the experiences. And so what we could do is think about um, something like a mentor menu you know what I mean? Where we say, what's, what's the mentor menu coming out of these, of the end users? Because if we don't know that menu, then we may come up with just a top-down approach rather mm-hmm. than a, a bottom-up approach. So yeah, I think no, that's, that's really, true. That's true. Like that. Jude always says, you know, for her, the role of the activist is to speak truth to power, right? And mm-hmm. also to build a trust network, which is so mm-hmm. much a part of this. Right. Yeah. And I think that, I think the, the both and, you know, what is the experience of the mentor with these 25 and tens and all those, and then what's the bottom up desires of the, mm-hmm. of the activists. If mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. truly our end use audience, mm-hmm. I want to know everything that they're interested in. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I think it's totally fascinating. I would love to do this. I mean, it, it feels like, and I'm just kind of feeling around for, I mean, it feels like it's more of a, um, like a consulting packaged of hours type of a thing and um you know designing maybe surveys or thinking about how we might structure this and structure the day and i think the big question mark is going to be whether you're in-house at rockefeller whether you can use the library for 
the footprint and get those hard costs because I don't, I mean, if you're in Rockefeller, then your hard costs are going to be very slim. Yeah. If you're at the library, depending on their deal, mm-hmm. it could still, it, it's going to be more hefty, but hopefully slimmer than if it's just retail. And then I like the idea of a cocktail hour afterwards, depending on the um, proclivities and appetite of that type of thing for the group, but could also be a lemonade hour. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> but I think, I think, you know, what we found, like if we had like, just like with, you know, the 17 rooms, like if we had like a working session where we released mm-hmm. the, yeah. the content to our working group and to Rockefeller, and then we had a bigger reception for women who are at UNGA. Yeah, there we go. That's you know, and then great. think like yeah. that way, mm-hmm. you know, we would, of course, invite Milan and mm-hmm. Hillary and. You know, not that they was necessarily Melinda, um, but um, and we could we will we'll have done the report and sort of talked about the report and 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 done all that and then have the the bigger mm-hmm. event. Yeah. Um, Do you think Gates Foundation would come in on it? They just did that uh, women in faith. We produced that with them, the Room Five event for seventeen rooms, kind of a, a follow on virtual event for them possibility and then you only because then you might get melinda i mean she did a she just did a recorded video but it was nice Mm -hmm. okay yeah all right Um, you know i want is mackenzie scott that's i know so do we that's who i think is really interesting right now (laughs) i know so do we yeah i mean we do we part part of what we're going to do and maybe we build this in Mm -hmm. is that we're thinking about what we're doing on the ground at Anka. So part of what we are going to do is this thing on mentorship and leadership, but then we've got our climate and um, we're doing that in partnership with Hive. Do you know the Hive, the women from Hive? Oh, they're, I think I've heard of that. Yeah. Who's they're the ones who did the red campaign and they did that's one. Right. Yes, and they also did right. Pandemica. Yes. Yep. Um, and so we're talking to them and by then we want to be able to sit down, you know, mm-hmm. hopefully before that, but if not with, um, Mackenzie and Melinda and ask for money yeah, for that seven year campaign mm-hmm. for the, you know, to think about that. And actually, I think the way that we're thinking about it is if we do a campaign, in association with someone like let's say Mackenzie or Gates. Mm-hmm. And then we just say it's, you know, 21 million and we'll draw it down. Like is sort of how we were yeah. thinking about it. But so that's an element too, that we're going to want to program. Mm-hmm. Right. So we're going to have to figure out like how we're doing that. Like, is it a session on leadership, a session on climate? Maybe that's what it is. And then it's a reception. Yeah. That's a hard, um, that's a hard decision. I mean, my, but see, I don't know what you're, uh, what you've been doing with Rockefeller so far. I mean, my, my thinking would be to just keep it on the leadership and mentorship, because I feel like it's, it's a double sell if we're trying to sell this and climate. I feel like climate will take the lead, which is fine if that's the goal, because it's like leadership towards climate, mentorship towards climate. I don't know, folks. Well, I think the thing is, it's it, you know, it's a really interesting question. And I think that it's important to grapple with it. I, I think that the um, the leadership is the the out is the uh, a component of our work. Mm-hmm. They want to see as we explore the notion of mentorship and leadership, what is the output that we come out of it, and that output is climate. So it's like, okay, that's how, that's what we're going to be working together on. So there's sort of two solves. They want the outcome. They want like, okay, so what project are you working on? And then two, they want us to come back with a look at mentorship and leadership and what we learned along the way Mm -hmm. through our work. Got it. Okay. That makes, that makes sense. Cause I wanted to get that connection. So we weren't trying to sell two totally separate things. So, yeah, I'm just thinking. If once we have the space in the venue, it's a mm-hmm. chance to mm-hmm. say we did two things today. One big idea, we're launching this yep. 
piece on mentorship and leadership for women mm -hmm. to we're giving you an update on the climate justice campaign. Yep. I like it. I like and maybe, it. maybe the reception is on the climate justice campaign. You know what I mean? There we go. I like that because this is what we're leading to. I, I think yeah. that just getting that agenda and that messaging and narrative clear would be really important to me so that it's, it's very clear mm -hmm. that this is, this is the how, but this is the what, you know, okay. the what and the why are climate. The how we're going to change that is through leadership and mentorship. Now that that makes sense in my head. So I'm not thinking about it as two different unrelated um, blips. Okay. It's All right. Hi. Cool. Will you send me this recording when we're done so I can send it to Pat too? Yes, I will. <laughs> so I can fill her in. And she's she's going to have to go through that that moment of our quiet, but that's okay. <laughs> you can tell her there's a blip in the middle. <laughs> Well, like I'll just have Emily edit it. That would be good. I think that'd be better. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I think this all makes sense. And the only thing to note, I mean, I think if we started relatively soon. Yeah, well, I that's what we want to do. Yeah, I think we could probably nail this about, you know, six or seven weeks. I have a two week break. I'm going to take in August yay, for the first time in two and a half years. Um, and then I have the July 4th week. So I would just yeah. want to make sure we, we plot that in ahead of time. Uh, so I've got that on my calendar, but yeah, that. yeah. And I think, yeah, I think like, I, like, like we're, we definitely want to do this. So it's not like, again, like we're bidding out for this. We definitely want to do it. We just, let's, let's just get the details of what it is that we're doing, yep. get that done exactly, and then start working on it and seeing what we can do to secure it with Rockefeller. Yeah. Exactly. And then once we know that component, then we'll know what we're I think that's the biggest piece is, is can we do it? And like I said, maybe they don't have all their spaces taken and spoken for at Unga Week. Mm -hmm. That would be ideal. I, I prefer that address better, you know, in the sense yeah. of now we're on site, but I think the second piece might be suggesting a New York public library option. Okay. So, which is also a great address, you know, it sounds lovely and the space is lovely. It's typical conference. Yeah. Open room, all the stuff included. Okay, so basically you're suggesting I go back to Sarah and just say, we're planning this. Is there available space? Yep, exactly. Okay. During during UNGA week, if not, um, we know that in the past you've partnered with a public library. Would that be a possibility for us as okay. well? And okay. don't, don't say where you heard that from. That should just be okay. vague that you know okay. that. Right. I don't know why okay. you know that. I don't know how you know that, but you've just heard that. Okay. Because okay. I don't know how public that is. <laughs> so, um, all right, this is great. And those two. Yep. Okay, so let's. Today is Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, can on Friday for next week. I'll oh, be good. out of pocket for Yay. the advertising festival. Oh, nice! It was for vacation. That's so. So, cool. um, and Emily. Mm -hmm. you know, who's uh, our partner too, um, will help us to move this along. And, um, and then, yeah, maybe even a follow-up brainstorm with, you know, for Pat as well. Mm -hmm. And then, but let, we'll, we'll get the, stru the structure in okay. place. Okay. okay. That sounds good. Excellent. Great. I'm sure I can. I've been excited. Are too many years. Me too. I'm really excited. Okay. Yeah. Sounds fun. <laughs> Always need to figure out a way to do something with Heather. Oh, I love okay. that. I like that as a, as a topic. I think that's good. Yeah, exactly. All right. Yeah. All right. I'll talk to you Excellent. soon. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.